Hi, I'm Rick with Baycom, and in this video, I'm going to show you the key steps to programming for TurboNet. First, we start with the repeater. The first screen when you read the repeater will be the device information screen. This will show you what firmware version that you need to be on, or that you have on your repeater. If your firmware is older than what's on Motorola Online, please update the firmware. The next tab is General Settings. In here, the only thing that we need to worry about for TurboNet's sake is group call hang time, private call hang time, and emergency call hang time. That way we can enter the right information in TurboNet. Next is the Accessories tab. In here, we don't need to worry about anything. We can leave this as defaults. Next, we have our privacy. This is where you'll configure your privacy in your repeater. You need to match this to whatever's in TurboNet. Our next tab is Network. This is the most important tab. In here is where you're actually going to set up the IP addresses for the master repeater, as well as your peer repeaters. Below, we have our Ethernet IP, Gateway IP, and Gateway NetMask, as well as our UDP port. The only thing that we need to enter in for TurboNet is the master repeater's Ethernet IP information, as well as the master repeater's UDP port, which can be found here, or on your peer repeaters can be found up here. Next is in our channels tab. We're going to select our digital channel. In here, the most important thing to select is IP site connect slot 1 and 2. This will allow all the traffic from the repeater that goes through the repeater to be pushed out the Ethernet port of the repeater. That way we can get the information into TurboNet. Next, we will move on to subscriber programming. For this case, I have an XPR 6550. Like the repeater, the first screen when you read the radio will tell you the firmware version as well as the device features. Our next screen, General Settings. In here is where you type your radio name and your radio ID. This radio ID is important for when you enter the information into TurboNet Dispatch. Below, we have the GPS and the private call checkbox. The GPS checkbox here allows the radio to actually transmit GPS. Another key thing in here is persistent LRRP requests. If you have the checkbox saved, the next time you go and write to this radio, I recommend selecting delete. So that way it gets an updated LRRP request. Our next tab is going to be network. In here, we're going to want to take a look at this ARS ID and TMS ID. What the ARS ID is it tells the radio where it's going to send its ARS information. So in the previous videos, I was talking about the virtual ID in the repeater um, being 64250. Well, this is where I'm going to type that in. So that way, it sends its information to that particular radio. And TMS ID is for text messaging. That just allows it to send its text messaging through there. The next tab, we're, next block we're going to talk about will be on your main channel. On your main channel, you're going to want to make sure that your ARS is selected on system slash site change. So that way, every time that you turn the radio on or you change channels, the radio will send its ARS to TurboNet to notify it. A couple of other key things I recommend is compress UDP header being checked which allows it to compress the data files before sent. The next is data call confirmed. I recommend unchecking this. This sends an extra acknowledgement that requires a more stable connection on your radio network. So if your radio is in some fringe areas and you try and send a data message, it may not get through. Next, we'll talk about control station programming. Here's a control station. Once again, when you read it, you'll have the firmware version on the first page. General settings is where we're going to label our radio name as well as the radio ID. As you can see, I have this one listed as 64250. So that way, when my subscriber sends its, a sends its ARS, it's going to go to this ID. In here, you don't have to check GPS, but I would recommend checking private calls as TurboNet might, act might use the private call feature. Next, we will move on to the network. The radio IP in this is going to be very important. In this case, 
I have this one as 192.168.12.1, which gives it an accessory IP of 192.168.12.2. So when you plug that USB port into the computer from the back of the radio, this is the IP that will come up on your computer. Below is a net mask. This will tell us what type of network it is. So if you change the last octet in this, it'll keep the radios on the same network, which is why we want to change the third octet. Below, we have forward to PC. By default, it's disabled. We want to forward it to PC via USB, so that way it forwards all of its information to the PC. As you can see, I don't have an ARS or TMS radio ID, because this is my ARS and TMS radio. So this is where everything will be coming through. I don't have ARS enabled on this system. The reason for it is because this radio will always be online and won't be tracked in TurboNet, so ARS is not required. Compressed UDP header is required, although. And that's because in order for it to work on all of the radios, it needs to be checked on all of the radios. That concludes the key indicators for Moto Turbo programming for TurboNet. If you have any questions, please see the site below.